In this video, I will be covering the setup and use of the Universal Planter Module of the SRES Global Plot Management System. The Universal Planter Module adds GPS precision and ease of use to any plot planter or drill, regardless of manufacturer. It will replace check heads, cable winder, or manual tripping of the planter. It also provides a GPS speed signal to replace an encoder speed signal. The first thing I'll be showing you how to do is set the UTM zone. We need this for our GPS. In our settings, we'll click on UTM zone, and we've included maps to help you find your UTM zone. I will be leaving it at the default of 14 since I'm in Kansas, but here's some other maps to show you how to find yours. Once the system has been installed on the planter, launch the GPM program and click on the Universal Planter icon. Then click the Settings icon. In the Setup Wizard, click Next twice to get to the GPS offset setting. The GPS offset, or inline offset, is a measurement from the GPS dome to the seed drop location on the planter or drill. This is used to line up our alleys. Enter the measurement and select if the dome is ahead or behind the seed drop. Click Next twice again. In the Universal Planter Definition box, enter the row count and row spacing and click Finish. Click on the Select Plot icon. Enter the client, division, location, and plot name. I have the first three already set, I'll just need a new plot name. The next step is to click on the Origins and Buffers tab on the left of the screen. This is crucial because we are using a GPS location to locate our plot. If you don't have the GPS coordinates, use a program such as Google Earth to find the latitude and longitude for your planting location. The coordinates do not have to be exact since we have ways of moving the plot in the program. Enter the latitude and longitude of your planting location, then uncheck the Origin Coordinate Locked checkbox and click on Set from Entered Text. You will now see a plot on the screen with the default plot dimensions. Click on the Plot Dimension tab to change the center of alley to center of alley dimension, the alley width, the number of rows per plot to display, the number of ranges and passes, and the planting direction or GPS heading. After making any changes, click on Update Plots. Click on the Select Plot tab. If the computer has an internet connection, we can use the World Data tab in the Select Plot tab to overlay our plot onto a satellite image. We can use the tools in the top bar to zoom in or out, to measure, or to pan the image on the screen. I'm going to skip ahead to a plot that I've previously collected some GPS data in our general mapping module. This process is covered in another video. At the top is the current plot file. Included here is a client, location, division, and plot ID, the number of ranges, passes, and total number of rows. In our plot data tab is all the GPS data for this location, including the data collected in general mapping. I will now check the box next to my boundary shapefile I recorded in the general mapping to make it visible on the screen. I then zoom out to be able to see the entire plot boundary I recorded in general mapping. I can see I need to move my origin, so I zoom in to see how far I need to move it. I switch back to my origins and plot counts tab to be able to move my origin to fit inside my boundary. The options for moving the origin are by north, south, east, or west or by left, right, ahead, or back. Check which direction to move the origin and enter the distance in feet and click on Apply New Origin. I first move the origin right 
to be in the boundary in the direction of travel and then move it ahead so my starting point is inside the boundary. I need 35 feet to turn my tractor around, so I'm going to display a 35 foot end buffer to size my plot inside the boundary. I've already entered the distance, I just need to check the show end and side buffers box to make it visible. I use the same process as before to move the origin so my buffer is inside the boundary. I can now determine how many ranges and passes will fit inside of my boundary. I can use the measuring tool to determine how much room I have from the plot edge to the boundary and increase the number of passes to fit in my plot dimensions tab. To use the measuring tool, select it in the top bar, left click, and drag. The distance is displayed below. Right clicking closes the measuring tool. I can now return to my Plot Dimensions tab and increase the number of passes accordingly. Always remember to click on Update Plots after making any changes. I simply repeat these steps to determine how many ranges will fit into my boundary. I can now see that my entire plot, including my buffer, is going to be able to be planted inside my boundary. I will also show an example of an isolation buffer. We do the same process. And now I show a 660 foot isolation buffer. Depending on your planter's type, we can also simulate. We can set the plot length in center of alley, center of alley, our alley width, our number of plots to simulate, and our simulation speed. Then we click Run Simulation and click Yes to simulate. In the Stakeout tab, we can highlight individual features of the plot. This is very useful for flagging alleys and staking the four plot corners before planting. The Universal Trip Module uses a serial connection to receive the GPS signal from the tractor's GPS receiver. Click on the settings to go back through the setup wizard. The first setting is the GPS configuration. Click on Find GPS and the software will search all available COM ports to find the GPS signal. Once found, click Next. We already measured and input our GPS offset, so click Next. The next setting is Trip Module Settings. Click on Search for Trip Module and the program will search all available COM ports to find the hardware connected via USB. When the COM port named, turns green, click Next. We defined the planter earlier so we can now click on Finish to close the setup wizard and save our settings. Click on the slider buttons to turn the GPS and the trip connection on. We refer to this as our planter T-bar. The X in the center of the green triangle is representative of the GPS dome. The triangle is pointing in the GPS heading that the tractor is currently pointing. This green line here represents our inline offset. And this bar across here is the width of the planter. The lengths of these two lines are defined when we set up our planter. 
Now that you're connected to the GPS and the trip interface, you can select your plot. Click on the Plant tab. Use the drop downs to select what GPS data to view during planting. In this drop down, you can view speed and heading. The bar here displays the range and pass information. If it is red, click on the reset trip for it to turn green. There is also a test trip button to send a trip signal to the planter. A light bar at the top of the screen shows the pass number on the right and the distance offline on the left. The pass number is also displayed here. Line the planter up with the blue line. This should match the AB line of the tractor. Since the universal planter model trips in the center of the alley, adjustments to the GPS offset will have to be made to line up the alleys. The universal planter module trips at every alley, including the last alley. Only drop as many packets as there are ranges, or the planter will plant beyond the last range. Note that while planting, this bar will change from green to red as the planter T-bar crosses the center of the alley, and back to green in the center of the range. This gives you the number of the current range while the planter T-bar is in the center of the range. With the planter set at its shallowest depth, plant several ranges in one direction, and then plant several ranges in the opposite direction. Flag the alleys and measure the difference from pass to pass. With the yellow arrows representing the direction of travel, the top example shows plots with the inline offset set too high. The bottom example shows plots with the inline offset set too low. To adjust, Increase or decrease the inline offset by half the measured distance. This example shows an alley with the inline offset set too low. For this, increase the inline offset by 5 inches and run the test again. Depending on the planter, this test may be after repeated several times when changing planting speed. Thanks for watching.